Hey everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series and in this video we'll be talking about Langchain's text splitters. So before we begin, it's kind of important to understand the context in which these text splitters will be used. So you might be uh, very well accustomed with the RAG pipelines or RAG solutions where we uh, want our customers to chat with our documents or chat with specific PDFs. To enable that, obviously, uh, you have to follow a workflow where you need to extract all the details out of your documents, create embeddings out of them, and sort of store it within a vector store like Pinecone, ChromaDB, or MongoDB's uh, vector search. Uh, and then uh, you would sort of query your DB in terms of cosine similarity or any other distinct function that you want to use to extract the similar sentences out of it. So that's how the assistants and agents or uh, domain specific chatbots are doing this particular thing. But obviously when you are storing the documents, uh, your PDFs can be quite long, 100 pages, 200 pages, even beyond 500 pages. So obviously with that comes a lot of performance concerns because you cannot just throw in your PDFs, convert them into embeddings because it takes a lot of computation in converting them into embeddings. And again, it takes a lot of computation in terms of finding the similar embeddings. So how do we make that process easy and a bit effective and efficient in terms of the computations which are involved at a vector store level or even at uh, uh, while creating the embeddings. So obviously the very first concern is uh, we need efficient processing. Uh, so we need to break these large documents into smaller documents. And hence, this is the reason why we need to chunk these documents, split them into like uh, um, smaller strings or so. So yeah, uh, so that's where Langchain's tech splitters come in and they offer like variety of different splitters. So we have a few of them over here. Uh, let's talk them in detail. So we have recursive, which happens to be the most common one, which is used across um, the community, especially for the PDFs. So, so what it does, it's just recursively split text. So you have a few default tokens, which are like, uh, the paragraph ending token, the, uh, next line ending token, and then spaces. So it would recursively tokenize your content based of these tokens and you can even provide your own tokens. Then comes, uh, a few of these HTML markdown and uh, when we say code, uh, we have different language support by Langchain, for example, Python, JavaScript. So uh, you can sort of split in terms of these languages. Obviously these uh, particular languages have different classes of tokenization, uh, which can be used uh, within your code. Then we have something which is based on character based tokenization, which is not sort of recommended because uh, it can create a lot of mess for the, for example, an open AI assistant or Langchain agents and stuff like that. But they're like the most basic form of it. And uh, the token ones, which sort of splits on tokens and instead of characters is more like an evolved version of the character uh, tokenizer. And the recursive one is even an evolved version of the token uh, tokenizer. So yeah. So we have quite plenty of uh, documentation here through which you can learn. What's, what's kind of important is to know that which ones are the basic ones and which are the most used ones. So in this particular example, I'll be using a recursive tokenizer or a recursive text splitter. So let's jump into our code. The very first thing we'll do, uh, we have a asset and this is like a cat and a mouse story, uh, which is, uh, which has like paragraphs and then you have next lines. Just this, these segregations indicate that, you know, it's like the next paragraph and we have 
uh, comma separated strings along with full stops. So very first thing we'll do is we're going to read our cat and mouse story. And the next thing we'll do is initialize our text splitter. In this case, we have recursive character text splitter and it takes a chunk size. So in this particular manner, you're defining that what would be my chunk size, which happens to be like a uh, hundred chunks, which uh, which can be the length of a particular chunk and when you say which kind of length function we're using so we're using len in python which happens to be obviously the length of the chunk so your tokenizer would start from here and let's say 100 chunks uncompleted over here it stop and this makes your one chunk but the next concept uh, we have of chunk overlap, which happens to be of 25 characters. So normally what overlap means when you're chunking, and let's say this is your very first chunk, you can see that you have a comma here and then you have a there. But your chunk has been done. This is your final chunk. But the context here is lost because there is a whole different context uh, which is being set over here. So in order to uh, sort of save a particular context, uh, we use uh, a few characters in terms of overlap. So after this particular chunk is finalized, we'll still go on and use like up to 25 characters so that we can make sure that uh, we can attain that part of context. So chunk overlap sort of helps in this particular case. So yeah, this is uh, this is everything about recursive uh, text splitters, and as I stated, it uses paragraph splitting first, and then it uses a line splitting next, and then it uses space splitting. All right, uh, moving onwards, we would initialize our text splitter, and we would uh, feed in with our story, and next we print all the items within our story. Let's go quickly and run this. Python text splitters.py and there we have it. So this is like our very first chunk. Uh, once upon a time, da 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 da, da and it yet again ends with there. So uh, this means like we have, a, uh, so it's keeping like 25 characters up to now. And then we move on, this is our second chunk. So finally, now the question might be, okay, you have all these chunks, but what's the benefit? what if it loses a bit of a context it's it's just like a trade-off that we talk in programming for example uh, you always have to bear the trade-off of space complexity versus time complexity so it's kind of a similar trade-off that we have here obviously uh, we require efficient processing and chunking your document sort of improves your similarity matching as well by breaking your documents down into smaller chunks you can capture more uh, nuanced similarities between documents so this granularity can lead to more precise similarity matching especially when dealing with uh, large documents and diverse details topics. to it so just in terms of visualization you can uh, go to chunk with a and it really helps you visualize stuff. So here we have character splitter, we have recursive character splitter, we have recursive character splitter for JS, Python, and Markdown. So you can sort of visualize it and you can uh, sort of play around with chunk size and stuff like that and how it sort of helps you with it. Uh, you can play around with chunk overlap. So this is the overlap that I'm actually uh, we were actually discussing. This happens to be the chunk size and uh, the 19 characters that I've said is, uh, if you visualize this, yeah, so these are the overlap that I was talking about. So this happens in character splitting. So what happens when we choose recursive text splitter? So in this case, you can see how neat it is. We, we, we can sort of get a whole paragraph uh, very easily uh, just by determining the chunk size. So it sort of helps in sort of uh, keeping the context in the best possible way. Obviously, it may lose some context. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it about uh, how 
uh, we can use corrector splitters and why we should use corrector splitters. Uh, you can use uh, different corrector splitters out there, but uh, Langchain offers like uh, an encapsulation where you can use a variety of them. So it's kind of effective and it's kind of cool. Great. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.